my name is Mike Gabin and welcome to my KSP campaign. Well, that didn't last long. After going through too much effort to marry these two at the conclusion of last episode, not to mention disappointing Sir Isaac Newton in the process, I only got a couple of hours of refining in before I ran out of the ore that I had collected. Even after shutting down the least efficient engines in this combined vehicle, I only had 161 meters per second of delta V. Not enough to get an orbit. Well, there's nothing for it. I gotta get more ore. So we'll separate and I'll reset up the driller. And while I'm doing that, why don't we talk about what is coming up for this episode? Well, I think the title says it all, Eve. After over 200 days in space, the crew of the Kermes 2 is finally arriving at the Purple Planet, where we will need to get a capture, and then think about shuffling over to Eve's solitary moon, Gilly. That's because we also have a lander on the way that we will eventually have to rendezvous with. Also this episode, the Arm E4 will be taking our pet D-Class asteroid over to the moon to see if we cannot attach it to our small collection of asteroids at Yoy Station. In the meantime, the driller is just about ready to start harvesting, not without taking some damage as you likely noticed. Well, I consider that karma for the abuse I put these vessels through last episode. So with the drills now deployed, let's get ourselves to EVE. Having begun their journey 231 game days ago, the crew of the Kermes 2 is just about to enter EVE's sphere of influence. It's a bit tough to see, you can just make out Eve a little below the vessel. Aboard we have our scientists Luya and Biltop, along with our pilot Tamley and our engineer Chrisnik. Oh, we're here! We've got to now get our capture. Well, let's take a closer look. Our periapsis is 109 kilometers, that is just out of the atmosphere, which is actually ideal but I'd like to try a little test. I'd like to try to do some arrow breaking. I've never attempted this before with this vessel, and it certainly isn't designed for it. So I'm going to be saving first. The ship has ample fuel to perform a normal capture, so I don't really have to do this, but I just want to see how it goes. We don't need a maneuver node for this. We just need to point radially in, do little burns until our periapsis is low enough. Alright, there we are. Got 59 kilometers on the periapsis. Let's see what trajectories has to say. Oh, it is predicting that we'll be pulling a G. That is a lot of aerodynamic pressure on a vessel that is in no way designed for it. At first I was thinking I probably wasn't going to end up showing this to you, but, well, I'll let you be the judge of whether it's worth showing or not. It didn't help that I got caught with my pants down and coming in so much faster than I'm used to, but as you'll see, it doesn't really matter when you're hitting a dense atmosphere at about 5 kilometers per second. Oh, oh, oh dear. Okay, I, I'm gonna call this one a failure. Yeah, this test. Oh my lord! Oh, it's coming. <gasps> oh, you, you gotta admit, this is pretty awesome. <laughs> okay, so lesson learned. Unless your craft is built for it. Arrow breaking into a capture about Eve? Bad idea. <laughs> well, we'll reset this and go for a more traditional capture, but in the meantime, the E-4, which was launched last episode, has reached its destination in orbit about Minmus. My idea here is to put the E-4 as close to being on the opposite side of the asteroid as I can from the E-2. That way, I'll have reaction wheels on both sides, which I'm hoping will make the asteroid easier to maneuver. I'm using the autopilot on the E4 to target the center of mass of the asteroid. So as I use RCS to move the vessel over to the other side, it should keep pointing the right way. Once I've got everything lined up, I'll just move forward and attach. 
there is a nice bulge on the asteroid in the spot that looks about right. Once I thought I had things lined up all right, I put the prograde vector onto the target vector on the nav ball and moved on in. Oh shoot, it didn't grab. Well, now the asteroid is spinning. No. What do they say about best laid plans? Okay, just let's let's just connect here. Oh shoot. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I can't turn this around a bit here. I can't see what I'm doing. Oh no, no. I don't want to go into this little gully. Back up, back up, back up. Okay. Okay, forget it. Just charge. Just connect. Come on, go. Ah, bounced off again. Oh, come on. No, 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 no. I, I, I don't care about being opposite anymore. I just want to go charge. Charge. Come on. Connect. You stinker. There. Okay, good stuff. All right. That's, oh, actually, <laughs> that ain't too terrible now. No, oh, that ain't bad. I can live with that. I don't have a lot of Delta V. So I'm going to leave this inclined and eccentric orbit the way it is. And I'll set up a burn at periapsis and just hop ahead orbits until I get close to a moon encounter. Okay, a 246 meter per second burn, 14 and a half days from now. And we'll get back to that a little bit later in this episode. But right now, it's time to get back to the Kermes 2 for real this time. Oh, in space high over Eve's Explodium C. Okay, 90 science. We'll transmit 36 of that. That was a gravity scan just there. I hate that blurpy noise. I swore there used to be a way you could turn that off, but I don't see it anymore. Oh, well. Anyway, there we go. Okay, so transmission complete. We'll take another gravity scan. We'll save that, and then we'll send Diltop out to collect that science. I'm considering the uh, copula module here at the end kind of like my airlock, so I'm just having Diltop hang out there. So he'll go over and he'll collect the science. Of course, I've collected the all the science I could that this thing has. I just didn't think I'd show it to you. And we're going to store that here in this science module. This is a neat little science module. A 1.875 meter part. So yeah, it's one of the things I'm kind of I think I like most about the DLC that's coming up, even though you got to pay for it. I like the fact that there are 1.875 meter parts finally in the stock game. Not to mention uh, two crude capsules too, something else that was long overdue. A little annoyed you got to pay for it. But heck, <laughs> I can't say that I did not get the value for my money out of this game, so I really am not one to complain. Okay, what is this? Kerbin Station food depleted. Kermes 1, 2. Oh, what the heck is all of this? Let's check uh, the life support monitoring. Yeah, got all kinds of stuff there in the red. This is a glitch. Um, they got plenty of food and life support. But I worry that if I ignore it, that uh, I'll suddenly get a message that uh, all those folks are dead. So I'm going to jump over to the Kermes 1. But once I get over there, of course, now everything is fine. Everything is in the green, and then I just pop back. And this keeps coming up, and uh, I, I don't know how. I'm just, I just have to do this. It's kind of annoying, but that is what it is. And it turned out that this Highland Science was the last high space science we were able to get. So we'll jump down to the point that we're only three and a half minutes until our burn. We are almost at the moment of truth. The burn itself is 3 minutes and 26 seconds. We'll be starting that very soon, so sorry Diltop, no more EVAs. In fact, let's get Diltop back into the lab module in the core of the vessel. You know, safety first. We are still in high space, but that situation has got to change. Oh, there it is! Okay, we are now in near space. Science times, we'll do a crew report. The crew report button actually from science, X-Science doesn't work. It's kind of borked, I don't know why. 
and uh, we'll just collect as much science as we can. We'll transmit what we can. Uh, most of this is not biome specific, but I am sort of popping in there. It just changed biomes again. I'll, I don't know, I'll get what I can. <laughs> We're going to be blasting through near space pretty quickly, but we will be back before too long, so we'll have another opportunity to collect what science we can. This 399 meter per second burn leaves me in a fairly eccentric orbit, but that's okay as I want to finagle my way to Gilly. I don't want to get into a lower orbit only to have to raise up my apoapsis again. We'll start the burn at half the length of the burn, a minute and 13 seconds. Well, that's weird. Why do I not have any better burn time countdown pips? I don't know. Let's just punch it. Oh, jeez, I see why. <laughs> my math sucks. Oh, my gosh, I started the burn 30 seconds late. Shoot. And we're dying. have to reduce thrust. Well, this is less than ideal. I started late, and then the burn is going to have to take longer than I expected because i got to reduce thrust. Let's just lock it onto retrograde. Oh, my goodness. Okay, yeah, is it coming? Yeah, it's coming. Yeah, it's coming back onto the retrograde vector. All right, all right, all right. We can, let's try putting up thrust here. I can keep an eye on the yaw indicator down there at the left, and I can see that it's pretty close to being completely pinned to the right. So that's indicating that this is about the max thrust that I can have. And I know what you're thinking. You're looking at this vessel and you're going, you bonehead Aben, it's asymmetric. Of course, it's going to be off balance and it's going to yaw one way. Uh, well, I thought it looked cool, okay? <laughs> when I designed this thing, I thought it looked kind of cool, the asymmetry part of it. And I swear, when I left Kerbin's Sphere of Influence, this thing was perfectly balanced. It flew just perfectly. Uh, in fact, I was using rotation. I used the um, persistent rotation mod to put a rotation on it to sort of give this kind of artificial gravity kind of a feel, and it rotated perfectly along its central axis. However, later on, it started to develop a wobble, which did indicate that the center of mass was off. I don't know why, though, because the only thing this thing has done is drop radial tanks, and it drops those radial tanks symmetrically. Um, the only other resources that aren't symmetric are the life support resources. But could that represent that much mass? I don't know, maybe. You know what, I, I'm just thinking now what I should try is I actually have a food container at each end of the sort of pendulum bit of this thing. Maybe I can shift food back and forth to try and see if I can get the center of mass more towards the center. I, I don't know, see how it goes. But either way, it seems like we're going fine right now. And in fact, what I think I'll do once this is all done is I'm going to reduce the maximum thrust on the engines. I'm about, I don't know, what would you say, that 70, 75% thrust? So I'll reduce the um, max thrust on the engines appropriately so that uh, I don't have to worry about it being a problem. I got rid of the maneuver node because it really wasn't doing anything for me anymore. We'll just keep it locked on retrograde and uh, keep burning until we get our capture, which really shouldn't be an issue. Oh, 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 camera change, camera change. My apoapsis is positive on Kerbal Engineer, but that doesn't mean I have my capture yet. Kerbal Engineer always seems premature on this one. But it should be just about there. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. There it is. There is our capture. Okay. I want to get that apoapsis to be about the same as it is for Gilly. Oh, it doesn't say I have an orbit here. What's that about? I was looking at, I'm looking at the experience on Luya there. It still says we're on flyby. Oh, well, whatever. I want to get my apoapsis down to about the same altitude as Gilly is above Eve. Oh, that's close enough for now. We'll, we'll, we'll play with this a little bit later. 
our lander's not going to be here in about another two dozen days or so, so there's no rush. We'll transfer Luya over to our airlock. <laughs> Have her ready to collect more science as may be needed. Oh man, our inclination is terrible. At first I put a maneuver at the relative ascending node with Gilly to make a burn to match planes. But then I decided I could save fuel by instead putting this burn out in the middle of nowhere just to get our orbits to cross. I'll likely be going into a polar orbit about Gilly anyway. Just watching that ascending node, and when it touches Gilly's orbit, the orbits are touching. I'll then work out on getting a rendezvous. Okay, that is 40 meters per second, just shy of 11 days from now. Burn complete. Okay, there we go. Ooh, it's a little weird I don't have any closest approach indicators. And as it turned out, no matter what I did, even going multiple orbits into the future, I couldn't even get the encounter nodes to pop up, let alone get a rendezvous. Could Gilly's smallness be the cause of this? Well, either way, eventually I decided I was going to match planes to simplify the situation, which required going all the way around to the ascending node, which is the one that's intersecting Gilly's orbit. Before I could get to that, my asteroid was ready to leave Minmus. I was hoping that having reaction wheels on both sides of the asteroid would help with this burn, but no, not really. I mean, it was easier to adjust attitude but I still got the same wobble, which meant no autopilot and me having to keep the thrust relatively low, which, of course, led to a long burn. I did do some good overthing, though. Well, as much overth effect as you can get from something as small as Minmus. Any closer to the surface than this would probably be pretty uncomfortable. What's the Kegel one again? That's a flag. This was Bob. I'll put this down when he made the first crewed landing on Minmus. That's pretty cool that we'll be flying right over such an important landmark. I'll be honest here, part of me wouldn't have been too upset if I had flown too low and crashed. <laughs> Manipulating this asteroid is a royal pain in the posterior. And the hardest part is yet to come when I try and attach it to my other asteroids, but as for this burn, everything went fine. This thing is on its way to the moon. And as the extra reaction wheels from the E2 weren't really helping, I cast it off to save a bit of weight. Right now we are actually on a Kerbin escape trajectory after swinging around the moon. So just like its predecessor, an Elon Musk Tesla, this thing is forever doomed to a lonely orbit about the sun. And my track record of keeping Kerbin's orbit free of debris remains intact. Either way, I do think the E4 may be in need of some support once it's in Moon's orbit. There's nothing like having Kerbals on site to make sure everything goes smoothly. So aboard the Corian 3 we have Valentina, Bartner, and Carol. Bartner and Carol in particular have been on Kerbin Station way too long and are in desperate need of a mission. We'll be sending them to Yoi Station well, Leo will await the arrival of our D-Class asteroid and be there to be on hand should they be needed. And with Kerbals on their way, there's still one more piece of hardware that is going to be required. You have seen this vessel before. It's the connector that I've already used to hook asteroids together. I just need a second one. This is weird. It should be starting into its gravity turn by now. Okay, now it's starting its gravity turn. Why is that? Oh, oh dear. It started that way too late. Okay, we're about to lose the boosters. Maybe that'll help. No, 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 no. Okay, okay, wait. How do you abort this? There's a command for aborting launch scripts. Ah, uh, come on, abort. Okay, I got it. By the way, it was control C. That does abort it. And then I had to shut the throttle off. Oh, this is lost. <laughs> oh, man. All I can do is direct it into the water so it does no damage. What is up with my KOS launch script? I mean, I've launched this vessel before with absolutely no issues. It just went up routinely, the exact same vehicle. 
I, I don't get it. I don't understand what has changed. I guess I'll just have to launch another one and control it manually. Meanwhile, the E-4 has arrived at the moon, and although I had no trouble getting my capture, there wasn't enough fuel to make the necessary inclination change to get to Yoy Station. I guess that means an E-5. <laughs> For those keeping score at home, that'll be the seventh vessel that I have used mucking around with D-class asteroids. But that'll have to be for the next episode, as I do need to get myself back to EVE. We are just completing our second orbit of EVE, and Louis is out gathering more of that sweet, sweet science. I performed the inclination change so that we are now in the same plane as Gilly's orbit, and I got a small rendezvous burn set up for the next time we are at Periapsis, which will get us our encounter with Gilly. This is a good thing, as our lander, the Kegel 7, will be entering Eve's SOI in just a few days. Even more importantly, I've got my ejection window to Kerbin set for 31 days from now. With 7.4 kilometers per second still in this vehicle, I do have some flexibility, but it turns out the longer I wait, the more expensive my return to Kerbin is going to be. So I do have to think about time. You can see a lot of other alerts set on alarm clock. The EVE 1 will be here in less than 10 days, which will be doing some mapping as well as dropping a couple of landers. Then it's the Drez 1 and Kermes 1 encountering Drez within minutes of each other only 15 days after that. I'm figuring the next episode is being the penultimate episode in this series, but as you can see, there is no shortage of goings on. For now though, as Luya takes in Eve's purple deadly beauty, I'm drawing this episode to a close. I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.